This is really part two of my first video talking about this dime formula or dime method. So if you haven't watched the first video yet, go right up here. I'll try to place a video right here. Go back and watch that one and you can understand where this came from and why I'm bringing it up. And this part really is the actual sit down in home presentation that I thought would be valuable to see how I actually did this in the home on a piece of paper. So if you haven't watched video one, go watch that. If you have, I hope this is helpful. Thank you for watching. So I'm going to go over to the desk right now and have a conversation with my fictitious clients, Jack and Jill, for you to see just how I do this in the home. So let's go. Okay, so I have my packet, I've got my lead sheet, my worksheets, my cover sheet, I got my diagram that I draw out for the customer, and I have the medical information, and I've got my application, so I'm ready to go. So I'm ready to go. Now, Jack and Jill, you indicate on the form your mortgage balance is $100,000, and that is certainly something that we want to protect tonight. I brought you some options, but before we discuss those, I wanted to go over some other considerations. Jack, if you were not to come home tomorrow because of a heart attack or a car wreck, not only do you not come home, but neither does the paycheck. And if Jill, you can't make the mortgage payment without his paycheck, there's a problem. Wouldn't you agree? Correct. And since Jill loses your paycheck and can't make the mortgage payment without it, it also puts other things at risk. So I always like to take a moment to look at some of these things to be certain so that we are covering everything that could be put at risk, Jack, should you pass away during some critical times for your family. Fair enough? Great. Okay, so I find estimating life insurance, unless you're in the business like I am, can be an intimidating task if you're not sure where to start. And there are multiple tools and strategies that help people project how much life insurance is needed. The most effective tool is what I call the dime formula. It's simple, but it's effective in understanding what you might want to consider in the amount of coverage you want to put in place tonight. So let me take a few moments here and go through this with you, Jack and Jill. Now, the D in dime stands for debt. So let's talk about what your current outstanding debt is that we may have to pay, Jack, in the event that you're no longer around, or Jill, either one. What is the current debt outstanding? Now, outstanding debt can be detrimental to the livelihood of your family if not accounted for properly. Let's start by adding up all accrued debt. Do you have any outstanding, like student loans? You do, okay. And how much? 10000 All right. What about credit card debts? Got some credit card debt? Okay. How much is that? $6,000. Okay. Any personal loans that you may have outstanding? Okay, Jill, you got a $2,000 personal loan out to who? Oh, your family. Okay. So personal loans. And you'd want that paid off, right? Make sure it's paid off in the event uh, you had a loss of income? Okay, so $2,000. Okay, what about maybe outstanding car loans? Anything, any, your car is paid off or do you owe money on those? You have some car loans? All right. And what's the approximate amount owed on those? 5,500, okay. All right, so anything else? Any other debt that we have not itemized here? No, okay. So that leaves us with 23,000 $500 of debt that you'd want to be covered by your life insurance plan, right, Jack? To make sure you insure your family's financial future. All right, good. So the next thing we want to talk about is income. That's the I and the dime. So let's take a look at your income. It's best to really estimate all sources of your income, including yours, Jill, and then take that number and multiply it by the number of years you feel your family will need that support, which really is those middle years when you're buying a home, you're raising your children, um, and you have a lot of outstanding debt or a lot of obligations. So uh, I usually like to shoot for about 10 years. And those years, so those middle years, is where you have so much to lose in the event a loss of income took place. This provides, uh, Jill, you the financial support that you need to continue on. So, Jack, what is your uh, annual income? 30000 Okay. And yours, Jill? About the same. All right. So 30000 so that gives us a combined income of $60,000 a year. Okay, so what I usually do is, again, going back to the 10 years, I take this and multiply it by 10, which gives us a figure of $600,000.
that's really the income that we want to protect to be financially secure for at least 10 years without any income. Because again, Jill, you may be raising the kids and not able to work, it's something that happened to, to Jack, so we want to be able to provide incomes for both, right? This allows you to have enough money to keep your family in your home securely, which is another important part of the formula. So now the reason why I came here tonight was you were interested in covering your mortgage, which is the M in dime. So what is the balance of your mortgage? $100,000. Now you don't have any seconds on your mortgage. It's just hundred thousand dollars, like you had on the on the form here. Okay, great. So hundred thousand dollars. And lastly, since you have children, we need to estimate what a college education will cost, which is the last part of the dime. E is for education. Okay. So we need to add up the amount of education expenses needed to send your children to college or private school. It is common, really, to estimate about hundred thousand dollars per child to cover any schooling needs. Right now, if they don't have children and plan on it in the future, this will already be in place. Or you can treat this like an emergency. For instance, it's like home repairs, car repairs, or medical emergencies. Now, Jack and Jill, you have two children, correct? Okay, so two children at a hundred thousand dollars a piece gives us a figure of two hundred thousand dollars for education expenses, correct? Right, so now adding all these together, we have $23,500 in debt. We have $60,000 in combined income. Multiplying that by 10 years, that gives us a figure of $600,000. We have a $100,000 mortgage balance, and we have two kids that, are going to, that we need educational funding for, either for private schooling or for college. That's another $200,000. That gives us a figure of $923,500, really, of income that is put at risk in the event that either one, either you, Jack, or Jill, passes away during these very critical years when you're building your family. This number provides a real accurate estimate of how much life insurance you're going to need to protect your family's future, again, especially during those middle years where your family has the most to lose if you pass and your income is lost. And along with that, the home and the dreams of your children are put to risk. So let's take a look at some options that I put together for you tonight. So at this point, I would pull out my worksheet and go over with them the options of covering their mortgage only, but also to have some coverage there for income replacement. This is particularly helpful when you're going into a home where the mortgage is very low. Maybe it was a refinance and they just grabbed out some money for maybe a home equity loan to do some repairs and had forty or $50,000 but it really isn't a budgetary issue. They have enough money to really protect their family against not only the mortgage, but also income loss to, to really protect the family's uh, income replacement, mortgage replacement, education replacement, and to pay off all debts. That really leaves a surviving spouse in a very, very good position because again, the whole idea here is pay off the mortgage, send the kids to college, and also pay the remaining debts and survive for 10 years, unless of course that individual were to remarry, there's a lot of considerations here and it kind of puts your clients in a different mindset going into your presentation. I hope this helps you. We're going to do a lot more of this. So let me go back and get on camera here. A few remaining thoughts and we'll wrap this up. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we're moving into new offices in stop. We're moving into new offices in January, so I'm going to have a dedicated video studio to come and shoot these, and really more of a and a much better environment to do more of that kind of stuff, sitting right down at a table and teach you things. So don't forget to join the Agent Success Academy. It's free. I'm not selling nothing. Please understand, I'm not selling anything on these videos. I'm here to help you. I don't sell leads. I'm not selling any trainings. I don't have a book to sell. I'm here to try to help you succeed in the industry because we need you. And as always, remember the surest way to succeed is to be determined never, ever, ever quit. Never quit. Expect to fail. You're going to fail. But quitting, you're quitting on yourself. Have a fantastic day. Check out the next video that I have right up. Check out these other videos. Again, give me a like. Hit the subscribe button, mash the bell, make me a comment, send me a text, email, or, give, or, or shoot me a phone call, and we can chat. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you for your support.
Bye-bye. Let's make 2020 your breakout year, and you may very well have to make a change right now to position yourself to profit in 2020. So let's go get it together.